Hello, everyone. It's Marty Parker. I'm the President and Chief Executive Officer of Waterstone Human Capital. And thank you for joining us today uh, for the Waterstone Insights, our first ever uh, Leader Pulse survey results. Um, what we want to do today is give you the results and some insights that we've taken out of our first ever Leader Pulse survey. Uh, and, uh, and then kind of take you forward into what this might mean into the future, uh, as well as uh, talk a little bit about what you might consider. Uh, and, uh, and we will have these slides provided to all of you who have joined us. We will send them following our session today. Uh, we should keep this session inside of 30 minutes or so. Um, and, uh, and we'll look forward to, uh, to, to moving this forward with additional uh, sessions like this in the future. Um, just to give you a little background uh, as to what this is all about and what we're doing for those of you who don't know. So between April 16th and 23rd, Waterstone Human Capital surveyed uh, just under 2,000 Canadian leaders from our Canada's Most Admired Corporate Cultures database. This was limited to Canada. I did have a question beforehand if, if we reached into the United States and we did not. Um, the, uh, this Insights Leader Pulse asked Canadian leaders three questions. One was a two-part question, and it was designed to help understand how organizational leaders are thinking about and responding to uh, and planning to emerge out of the COVID-19 crisis. This is the first of uh, four as we begin three question surveys being sent out to leaders in the coming weeks. And I just wanted to give you a sense of what the four broad survey topics are all about. The first uh, that we're reporting on today is really about leadership pain points and the initial impact that they're feeling and what they plan to do coming out of COVID-19. Uh, Pulse 2, which is in market this week, if you've received it, is really about how you're dealing with that impact now that some time has transpired in the handling of COVID-19. And that survey can be found on the link that's provided. And as I said, we will provide this after the call. Um, the third is really on the impact in maintaining culture, really the impact on us as leaders and how we might maintain and in fact, grow, develop and, and uh, uh, our culture through this, through this challenge. And the fourth is the future of workplace culture. We're gonna talk a little bit at the end of this uh, uh, webinar about the future of workplace culture because we're dealing with that on a daily basis at Waterstone. So for those of you who've been on on social media or on our own website, you'll see this infographic that really highlights uh, the uh, some of the results. I'm not going to go over this specifically because we're going to go over this in a little bit more detail, but you'll have that as well uh, so that you can review it on a one slide uh, on, on one slide. First question that we asked is regarding COVID-19 virus situation. What are your top three pain points or considerations in your day-to-day -day business as a leader? Now, must remember this went out about two weeks ago and the research came in over the last week. So uh, the, the top three answers were as follows, although we've listed five here. What's, what's quite incredible is that 77% of respondents indicated that the well-being and, and safety of their team members, customers, and suppliers uh, are what was paramount to them. I mean, that's an overwhelming uh, kind of number, and I think is, uh, is quite, uh, quite inspiring to know that that was the number one, uh, number one consideration. Not surprisingly, just under 70% said cash flow pres preservation or the protection of sales and, and revenue. Uh, and, and also, I don't think surprising at all is that just under 50% said, you know, they're concerned about the volatility, viability, continuing of their own operations and economic factors surrounding, uh, surrounding that. Um, but also, excuse me one sec while I'm turning off a, something on my screen. But also uh, leveraging or taking advantage of market disruption. So one in five of, of Canadian leaders indicated this. And this is quite interesting. And I think you'll see this reflected in, in future, future uh, answers here. Quite interesting that they're looking to take advantage of what is a very difficult situation. And again, 14% saying that uh, one of my biggest considerations is uncertainty of fear uh, of people, let alone ourselves. But really quite inspirational here is, is some of the results here on question two, which was on a 10 point scale, how ready do you as leaders feel to lead your organization 
through this uh, crisis and select the reasons why you chose that rating. And, and really 7.8% um, and uh, have, have feel that, that uh, if you wanna call this a ready to, readiness index, feel ready to lead through this crisis. That's incredible and speaks to, I think, the confidence and preparation and training of, of Canadian leaders. But they said so for, for the reasons of people. 81% um, because they have a great team working with and alongside of them. You could assume that to be senior management and leadership team. But 64% said the, that it was because they had a great quality workforce. And I think this speaks to, uh, speaks to the focus on people that we talked about earlier. Just under 50% felt quite ready and confident because they had a strong communications and or crisis disaster operational recovery plan. Um, which, which again, I think uh, is lessons learned from, from the past and, and the readiness and preparation that, that they've uh, addressed in, in future be, uh, as a result of, of past issues. Um, folks like me love to see the next number, uh, the next two, and that's that they have great advisors and, and, and access to helpful information. And I think we're all overwhelmed to some degree, surprised and delighted in others of the kind of information and the amount of information that we're receiving. It'll be curious to know in times ahead if we feel that access to helpful information is still high, higher, or in effect, lower. The third question is really about what you're doing now or planning to do in the future to help you successfully emerge. And again, the focus being on people, 80% and then 66% indicated that it was about increased communication with team members. And this is a little surprising to us that it's so high considering the amount of communication we as leaders are being required to do and are, and are offering up in this day and age, but it continues to be a focus and an important part of coming out of this crisis is to stay connected to team members, but also to customers and suppliers, almost as high with two thirds of Canadian leaders saying that. I think one of the most interesting data points in this entire Pulse survey is that almost 60% of leaders said that they're planning to either improve or create new products or service offerings. That's amazing, quite frankly. Uh, and I think we will see the, uh, the improvement, the a lot of innovation come out of, this, uh, come out of this crisis. In fact, many of us are seeing it already. Not surprising in terms of prefer, uh, preserving cash and reducing headcount. Uh, and again, this was still when many of the government stimulus programs were uncertain, maybe announced, but uncertain. This also will be curious to see as time goes on, uh, you know, how we, how we uh, react to this question. But I think two of the most interesting data points are the last two, that a third of us are looking for this time to train or upgrade the skills of our people. Maybe because in, for some of us who aren't on the front line or aren't continuing operations at the same level, uh, that, that is a great time to kind of retrain uh, reskill, if you will. And one fifth, one fifth, which is amazing to us, particularly in the executive search business, are planning to upgrade their own talent. Now, we don't have a breakdown as to where those were at this point, or who those of you were, but to us, that, that seems uh, quite, quite high, and we will monitor this as time goes on. So some, some points just kind of to review that, that you can we can assume that Canadian leaders really do feel ready and confident about their abilities and those of their team to lead through the crisis. And they largely do feel this way as a result of their team members and their people. But there's a measured degree of optimism that we can take out of this Pulse survey. And that is really uh, indicated by three points. The 60% who believe that this is an opportunity for them to create new products or services or improve their own the one third of us that feel that it's an opportunity to increase training and development, and even one fifth upgrading their team or leaders. And we particularly, really in our search practice, have seen that starting to loosen up in the last week where so many of our active engagements in that part of our business were put on hold uh, for, for some time. We're now starting to see that loosen up. So uh, this, I guess, controlled optimism about hiring is, is starting to kind of rear its head just a little bit. So we wanted to take an opportunity here, not just to reflect upon these results, uh, but also just to talk about what this could mean to the future 
of our workplaces and workplace culture. And I love the quote that Gandhi uh, is known to have said that the future depends on what we do today and what you do today. We think that's quite true. I just wanna talk just briefly about some of the changes, some of the discussions and some of the activity that we're engaged in. And I think it's also a reflection of what we've heard from leaders and, and, uh, uh, and, and we're having more and more discussions on this and, and happy to have more with you. First of all, as it relates to our own work, well, clearly uh, where and how, even how we get to work uh, has changed. Um, less of us are in, are in offices today. Obviously, most of us still resting in place are at home for, for good reasons, but this is going to have a dynamic impact on what was already changing uh, in workplace culture. You know, as we go back to work, some of us will have staggered work shifts. We certainly will have um, new regulations, if not best practices in, in terms of spacing and how to work. There will be health policies and many of us are incorporating health checks, if you will, um, in terms of uh, allowing people and engaging with people back at work. There will be significant workplace, physical workplace and workspace redesign. Um, and that will lead to things like auto doors and auto censoring on, uh, on things we've seen before, but they will be much more commonplace in, in the workplace. In fact, the workplace as we know it, in some cases and in many more cases will become the meeting place and or the face-to-face -face place. And then there will be those of us that want to rush back to work. I, I'm one of those people as I sit in my home office here uh, and, because I feel much more productive around others. And so this combination is going to have a significant impact, not to mention what we're already seeing in terms of bringing new people into our organizations where, you know, recruiting and, and uh, onboarding of people may come from other time zones and other markets. As we say to ourselves as leaders, do we really need to have that person physically beside us? Uh, am I looking for a best in class person and does it matter where they are? Um, and that, that question obviously will be answered differently by those of us um, in, in various industries, businesses, and locations. In terms of travel, um, obviously we've already seen that, uh, that, the impact on that, and we will see more of it. Uh, I know in our own country here at Canada, announcing that international travel won't be fully operational until the end of this calendar year. Quite, quite a thing to, to hear. But not just air travel and meetings in person will be less, and it will likely be more expensive, hard to imagine in a place like Canada where, where air travel has been quite expensive relative to other jurisdictions in the world. But commuting terminals will again implement health checks. It will, uh, it will be more challenging for people to do that. And they will question whether they need to, should, or otherwise. We're seeing in China the use of QR codes or you know, immunization records to allow people to chat, travel and we'll see more of that. So the concept of how much do I need to travel will be significant. But the real impact we believe is that culture will now be even more important and even more of a competitive advantage than ever before. And, and you know, the, the rationale behind that is that um, we are now going to be into a combined physical and virtual or digital workplace experience. And, if, and those will need to be equal. In other words, the digital experience will need to be equal if not better than before. And this can have an incredible impact on how we do things. In fact, our culture, our values are, are not likely to change. They may be enhanced, but our culture does change with significant, uh, um, what I would say paradigm shifts like what we're dealing today. And so the opportunity for your culture by design, if you will, is now. And the focus on what and how we get things done versus when and where we get things done uh, is, a, is, is a, an important consideration. Um, team member, the whole team member experience, not just talent acquisition, not just development training, as we talked about, will completely be changed and enhanced by this combined virtual and physical um, uh, workplace. And where flexibility and lifestyle previously became to some degree opportunities and in others concessions, now they are really tools that we can use uh, because outcomes before become more important. Where speed and efficiency increase, uh, hierarchy certainly decreases. 
and we'll see this and cultures that take advantage of this uh, will, will, will really benefit. And so offices, as we said, become kind of meeting places, workplaces for others, or the uh, person, you know, the face-to-face -face place will be significantly influenced more than ever before by comfort in the creative spaces at home. And so we need to prepare ourselves for these things. We believe that there are five future cultural success factors that will be underpinning this paradigm shift in, in uh, workplace culture. And the first is really going to be centered by personal wellness. And we're seeing the impact of this now. We have been experiencing this for some time, but this will be facilitated by this crisis, not just in terms of health, but mental or physical health, I should say, but mental, mental health, uh, emotional health, spiritual health, and physical health will also need to be provided uh, as a center point to team members and be digitally offered. And, and the simple example I think about is that if you had a gym uh, that you were using in your workplace, those types of things will need to be offered or programming in the digital space. And, and this has far reaching uh, in, uh, kind of uh, an impact and beyond uh, what, we're what, I'm, what I'm suggesting here today. Leadership becomes much more dynamic and, uh, and much more challenging where leaders' communication skills, both in the physical and, and virtual world, uh, the requirement to be more empathetic and to drive more outcomes uh, without as much influence or physical or influence becomes important. Those leaders who are digitally swift, in other words, um, will, will, will take advantage and who have exceptional soft skills. Um, I think empathy and judgment will be, will be at the core of those. Uh, and also leaders who have the courage to determine when we need to be physically in person and when we don't, because that will be a requirement as well. I think the movement to more self-driven, personal, and team performance will be critical. And this is what we talked about before with as speed increases, bureaucracy decreases, but dashboarding, uh, project management, both uh, an outcome-driven uh, a team collaboration tools will support this. But the, again, what's really important is the what and how here. The what and how will be paramount over the wh where and when. And I think it's important to understand that. Training and development now will take a different uh, uh, kind of, I, I think, place. Not just in terms of us as leaders, but in terms of our teams. And we have a lot, not just in terms of uh, to catch up to this kind of digital transformation and paradigm shift that is happening but this will kind of touch on all of the things that we're talking about before. And development won't just be in terms of the development on a skill, but a lot more coaching and a lot more, uh, uh, what, what we would say, uh, lifestyle and personal development as we go from work-life balance to work-life integration in both the physical and virtual spaces. And finally, we're seeing this, and we have seen this for some time, but this, this will be sped up significantly the concept of purpose. You know, that profit and purpose can coexist, but this is more than that. That purpose is at the center. That organizations who really align to a purpose uh, and, and, and where it's clear for team members, both future team members, existing team members, and they can experience that purpose. They can articulate that purpose and feel that in their work. Where meaning and impact take a much bigger place. So all of these things require to some degree a redesign either of our existing culture or to a much more purposeful culture uh, or, or designed culture to support the changes that are happening. We, we've often said that you know, changing culture should be slow except when you're in a crisis, it will happen quickly. And the reality is we are in a paradigm shift. And so we need to look at these things uh, clearly. Uh, for example, our own purpose is building high performance cultures um, with many of you, our clients, you know, we do it in some areas uh, with you and, and other areas we don't. Uh, those are our executive search services and recruiting for fit, our culture and engagement measurement assessment and advisory services, and our leadership training and development services in our building high performance teams program. And I'll come back to that in a second to talk about our own paradigm shift and our own change. But something to think about is the re-envisioning of your business today to your future business and 
how your culture uh, should fit into that. And just uh, something to think about, and we're, we're getting ourselves engaged in very short order in both cultural and business assessments with our clients of where you are today and where you wanna be tomorrow. Uh, and in a sense, what you need to stop, what you need to start and what you need to continue to take advantage of the changes that are happening. Because now uh, more than ever, we are, going, we are involved in, in a massive change um, that will, I think, benefit our organizations uh, significantly, but will take time. And the planning and advisory services to help you emerge as a stronger business and as your culture is really, or those behaviors that drive your business, in other words, your culture to, to stronger, purposeful and design culture, as well as your leadership team are going to need to be thought out. And so I would encourage you as we break for a weekend here, if you get that, uh, if you get the time to do so, to kind of think about 100 or 200 days out what you want your business to look like and what are the changes and to kind of think about what you would need to implement today. And if we can help you, we'd be delighted to do so. Just a couple of things in terms of what we've done ourselves, just to give you an example in these last six or seven weeks, and, and this can help you think about your own businesses. Our three areas of business of executive search, of culture and engagement measurement advisory, and of course of leadership training are kind of going through a transition like this. We, our search business clearly has been impacted substantially as mentioned before by this business. We know it will come back. But today what we've done is unbundled those services and with some clients we're providing today leadership assessment of their existing organization to get a sense of the skill sets of their leaders, something they may not have been done before. In fact, some of you on this line are going through that with us now. Um, on talent ma mapping in terms of where your virtual bench should be outside of the organization, which is something that can be done in these times. And in other cases, recruitment training, helping your internal teams learn how to uh, recruit or fit uh, as you emerge out of these times. And for those one fifth of you uh, who are optimistic about, about to be hiring now, uh, and all of these to be digital delivered. Uh, most of our executive search work in terms of, of, of our work with our clients has been there already, but there are areas that we are having to certainly, I would say, underhaul or overhaul. It depends on which way you look at it. Um, in our cultural engagement measurement business and advisory services, there's not a lot of full cultural engagement surveys going out, but we've been amazed at, at the frontline organizations or those of us that have our team members working at home who've wanted to pulse, in other words, three to four questions surveys, not unlike what the, uh, what the insight survey has been to leaders, to check on them has, in, in simple ways, see how they're feeling in some cases, and those are happening now. But we've turned that business outwards to do things like the pulse, to determine what Canadian leaders, you know, where their hearts and minds are, what they're planning to do to merge out, and we will do more, uh, as we talked about earlier. Um, and the creation of the Waterstone Insights Pulse really came out of, of, this, of this crisis. And finally, in our building high performance teams and cultures business, we've really re-envisioned, if you will, an entire uh, platform built on leadership-focused digital learning and curriculum. Now, we're not there yet, and that will take some time. But today, we can uh, provide the complete digital delivery, excuse me, of our building high performance teams program. We've been doing that in the past. We've created our culture in crisis program, which we've been delivering on webinars and our future of workplace culture, which you're getting a highlight here today. So I share these with you because it's an opportunity for you to look at your existing business. Um, but more importantly, the behaviors it's going to take to succeed as you go through this digital and cultural transformation. Uh, and of course, in our case, it means not only Zoom and other video, that's the simple part we've been using that uh, otherwise, but complete digital communications, re-envisioning and repurposing uh, using Teams or Slack, our own workforce and project management systems, some that work very well in this new digitized world, others less. Uh, and a movement to digital and cloud-based telecommunications and server platforms, which, which is underway in our organization and underway, frankly, a lot faster than we thought they would be. Not to mention kind of the redesign of our physical <laughs> uh, and now our digital workspaces. Uh, and this will lead to care, carefully analyzing and redesigning where necessary our recognition rewards 
performance management, and other systems accordingly. So it's a lot, uh, but it's done with purpose and with a focus, uh, quite frankly, to be a much better business than we were seven and eight weeks ago when we went into this, uh, when we went into this crisis. So just before we cl uh, close, I'll leave you with this thought. And that is to think about the next 100 or 200 days, as I talked about before. What is it that you should stop, start, uh, you know, or continue? And then in terms of being purposeful with your culture, uh, what is it that you need to do more of? Culture is about behavior or less of as you go through these changes. And if we can help you, we're here to do so. I want to thank everybody for uh, spending the time with us here. Uh, for some of you early this afternoon, for others this morning uh, as we uh, go from east to west. Uh, and if you have questions that we didn't answer, please send them in to us. We will follow up with you in terms of uh, sending out these slides and we'll look forward to our continued relationship and have a great weekend. Uh, and thank you for, just for participating in Waterstone Insights. We'll look forward to your ideas, thoughts and participation in the future.